Out front tonight, Trump cashes in the president releasing his annual financial disclosure report. It gives a glimpse into the president's finances, but just that a glimpse. It is far from a full picture tonight. What we learn is that the president earned at least $434 million last year. What we don't learn is who paid him all that money and to whom does he owe money. But one highlight in the report is this. The Trump International Hotel in Washington, D.C. made $40.8 million last year. That's more than last year. And it's money powered by lobbyists and diplomats and business people, uh, reportedly from countries including Saudi Arabia, Bahrain, Kuwait, and Malaysia. Trump minting money at the hotel, thanks in no small part to his presidency. He even admitted it under oath in a deposition when he was only a candidate for the White House. He was talking about how his rise in the polls, his wins in the primaries, was helping that hotel specifically. We've beaten a lot of people. I think people like that. So I think it's had a, uh, I think it, it'll be great for the building in question. Well, it's been great for that building. It's a building Trump visits frequently as president, as does his staff. A, bl a building that Trump blatantly promoted to the world. I have a great, great, the best, probably the best piece of land in Washington. One of the great pieces of land, the old post office. And I'm very proud of it. It's a great building. We built it into a hotel. It's on Pennsylvania Avenue, right between the Capitol building and the White House, right smack in the middle. So who are the players paying up to get close to Team Trump? Well, we don't know. And that's a problem. So the disclosure form that we just got is 88 pages. Only 88 pages. Only, you say? Yes, I reply. Compare that to Trump's taxes. These are only two of these are two of the only images we have of Trump's returns. We'll show them. Uh, this is from uh, Oct October of 2015. Uh, you know, I think we can all agree that that is a whole heck of a lot more than 88 pages. And that is why Americans still need to see the president's tax returns. Tomorrow is the deadline for the Trump administration to turn over six years of tax returns to Congress. And tonight it seems clear the administration will defy yet another subpoena. Pamela Brown is out front live outside the White House. Uh, Pamela, you know, these 88 pages, as, as I, you know, if I were to show the other stacks, it would cover uh, both of us all the way across the screen um, of just one year of tax returns to compare. Does the president really think releasing this financial disclosure will, will stop the calls for his taxes? You know, he's likely hoping so, Aaron. He has repeatedly said that he believes financial disclosures are superior than tax returns. And it appears tonight, Aaron, that the Treasury Department isn't budging on handing over those tax returns as of now. Now, the president declined to answer questions today uh, from the press, but there's no indication that these mandated disclosure forms out today will do anything to quell the calls for the president's tax returns amid the subpoena deadline tomorrow night uh, from House Democrats for six years of the president's tax returns. The disclosure documents today say that the president, as you pointed out, made $479 million last year, do not reveal as much about finances as a tax return. First of all, it just has ranges. Um, tax returns, as you know, though, uh, in comparison, includes granular details about income and um, asset valuations, along with other information. Uh, so there is a difference there. But these fresh disclosures, uh, the Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin indicated uh, yesterday Today, actually, Aaron, that he would likely resist the subpoena order from the Democrats saying, I think you can guess basically how the Treasury Department will respond. And personal lawyers for the president have argued that Congress is overreaching in its request and hasn't shown a legislative purpose for for asking for the six years of tax returns. But as you know, a judge expressed skepticism of that argument earlier this week, saying Congress doesn't necessarily need an explicit legislative purpose, Aaron. All right, Pamela, thank you very much. Out front now, Democratic Congressman Dan Kildee, who sits on the House Ways and Means Committee, which of course requested those taxes. So let me ask you, Congressman, you've seen uh, the disclosure form today, these 88 pages. Uh, what did you learn from it? Well, I haven't had a chance to go through them thoroughly, but what we know is that they, they paint a picture, but not anything close to a complete picture of the president's finances. And the specific question, it clearly does not answer. The specific question that we're looking at is whether or not uh, the IRS properly enforces tax law on the president of the United States. We can't glean from these records anything on that question. And so that's the purpose that we've sought, for which we have sought these returns, and that's why we continue to press. So 
I, I want to play something for you, Congressman, that the president has said about this specific form, the uh, public financial disclosure report in the past. Here he is. People don't understand tax returns. Now, I did do a filing of over 100 pages. I get far more from that than you could ever get from a tax return. Far more from that than you could ever get from a tax return. Obviously, uh, you know, when you just look at the raw information, 88 pages versus uh, a thousand probably at least in the one year that we showed a picture of uh, but what do you say to him well the president will say anything to diffuse any criticism or deflect us from looking behind the curtain uh, it just doesn't make any sense what he says we are looking specifically at whether or not he is somehow evading tax law or whether the IRS is not properly enforcing law maybe as a result of his direction yeah. uh, but but the, it's a bit condescending for the president to say that we wouldn't be able to understand the tax returns. Let me assure you, Mr. President, we'll figure it out. So, uh, you know, I mentioned, Congressman, uh, uh, in the lead in to you, the Trump International Hotel in Washington. We actually went online tonight to check if we wanted to just check in and, and book a hotel room tonight. There was one available. It was at $695 online compared to the Four Seasons uh, in Washington, which was 500 is the president benefiting from his office or his hotel, is his hotel that much better than the Four Seasons? Well, I've never been in either one of them, so I really can't answer that question with any expertise. But I will say the president seems to seek to uh, benefit himself in every way possible. This has been the entire story of his career. The fact that he continues to substantially control his business enterprises while serving as president of the United States is a precedent that is just unbelievable that has been broken and doesn't create more outrage. Uh, but I think we have to assume that the president will do whatever he can using every resource, including public resources, to benefit himself. This has been his history. So your chairman, uh, obviously, Richard Neal, has subpoenaed six years of the president's personal and business tax returns last week. You were just referring uh, to the fact that you could figure it out if you got them. And tomorrow's the deadline, right, for the Treasury secretary to comply with the subpoena. He's made it pretty clear that he's going to defy it. Here's what he said yesterday. We will comply with the timing of it. And I think you can pretty much guess how we're going to, but I haven't made a decision. Uh, do you expect you're going to get anything from him? Well, I think ultimately we will. Uh, whether or not they want to comply with the law is a decision that they obviously are making. I disagree with the decision that they're making. I think it's a terrible precedent that they would contradict plain letter law that says they are obligated to deliver these returns. It's not up to them to decide when Congress, was, Congress is acting on a legitimate public interest. They don't get to dictate to us the subject How matter of our work. How long do you think it'll work. take you to get them, though? I think it'll probably end up being up to a court to make that determination. But I've talked to the chairman about this. He is not going to turn away on this. We are going to pursue this using every tool available to us. So I don't think simply denying this request is going to be enough. They're going to have to answer to a court ultimately. All right. Thank you very much. I appreciate your time, Congressman. Thank you. And out front now. Russ Butner, investigative reporter for The New York Times, who has done a lot of reporting and seen more of the president's uh, taxes uh, than anyone else in your investigations. OK, so you've been through this. What stands out to you? What stands out is that it wasn't a great year for the president. Uh, his overall revenues, this is just revenues, not profits, right. were down about 4%. Um, some of the properties had substantial declines. The golf courses overall seem kind of flat. Mm -hmm. um, and there are a couple of places where he had substantial income coming in that has just sort of disappeared, some of the hotels that have gone away. So it seems that the Trump International Hotel in Washington, mm -hmm. which I highlighted for a reason, because it is uh, a place if you do want to be seen and, and noticed by the administration, it's the place you go. That's the hotel that stands out as, as that's the strong performer. Well, it's, it's remarkable. It's up about 1%, staying tough at about $40 million. But that's not a big jump for someone who has devoted so much attention to it. And for the Republican Party, having sent lobbyists or lobbyists who want to be there, people who want to curry favor with the president going there, it's not a huge jump. But 1% is still a substantial amount of money. What, what do you think about that room rate that I just asked the congressman about? $695, uh, you know, if you were to just go online and book it tonight versus 500 at the Four Seasons, which is obviously an incredibly nice hotel in Washington, D.C. Is there a Trump premium? 
it's hard to say. I don't know the, what the rates are on all these kinds of yeah. things. It doesn't seem to be that they're outperforming their competitors very much. Our reporters today spoke to some industry analysts who said actually their hotels in Chicago and in Hawaii are underperforming. So right. how it fits in the mix in Washington, D.C. is not really clear right, right, right now. Right, Of course, there you have the, the lobbyists and the diplomats and a whole other set of uh, interests, perhaps, right. than, than people staying in other hotels. Uh, you were part of a team that have obviously has reported the most information we've seen on the president's taxes thus far. Uh, tell, explain why what we got today is not enough. Well, it, again, it's just revenue. So you can tell he, his companies brought in about $435 million, but you don't know whether his expenses are $700 million a year, which means he's in deep trouble, yeah. or there are $300 million a year, which means he's doing maybe okay. You can't tell from this also whether or not he's paying any taxes. The president throughout his business career yeah. has found a way to lose enough money to not pay any taxes. And you also can't tell, years. right, whether it's a Trump International Hotel or a golf club, who? is paying all these millions of dollars, right? Mm -hmm. So you don't know whether it's uh, some wealthy individual or an oligarch, or you have no idea. That's absolutely right. You can't tell anything from uh, about what the, where the money's actually coming from here. He could have sources of income that are not on this that would be funneled into these uh, entities that you might see on a tax return. As well, right, and a taxes could show that, which is right. important as to why we need those. Thank you so much, Russ, I appreciate it.